Hello everyone, this is Pastor Alan Hathaway from the Garrison Church of God. I'm glad you joined me for this message today. I'm going to be starting a series, a two-part series called Knowing Who Jesus Is, and it's going to be coming out of John chapter 5. Today's thought will be, what do you really want? And we'll be looking at verses 5 through 9. I thought about the things that we really want in our lives. What kinds of things are we challenged with? Uh, in John chapter 5, Jesus challenges us with several questions that require us to confront who he really is and ultimately who we really are. It is not an easy question. It begins with a story uh, from Jesus' experience with a man who is lame, uh, who is by a pool called Bethesda. I am struck by this particular story, and to be honest with you, for many years I have struggled with it. I have tried to figure out all the ins and outs of this particular story, and I'll be talking a little bit more about that. What strikes me the most is a question that Jesus asks this man in verse 6. The question is this, do you want to be made whole? Or another way of, of translating that word would be, do you want to be made sound again? Do you want to be made whole or sound? It's a, it's a serious question. What Jesus is asking this man seems to indicate that his physical ailment is a result of a decision in his life. Why is he staying in this condition? Uh, I'll be talking about a possible reason for that uh, during my message uh, this morning at uh, Garrison, but I want you to think about that question for this man. Why do you want to stay in this condition? Jesus knows that this man has been in this condition for a long time, and we're told by John that it's been 38 years uh, that he has been in this particular circumstance. The indication of what Jesus asks him is, is that he could have changed that, that he made a decision to stay there. There are times when we choose to wallow in our struggles and our problems. Jesus indicates in this man's condition and also in another man's condition, the paralytic at Capernaum, that their conditions were the result of some type of sin. The other indication is that their, their ability to recover from those have to do with their attitudes and not as much with their physical problems or disease. In fact, they may not have had a physical cause for their disease. Their disease may well have been emotional or spiritual in nature, and I'll be talking a little bit more about how that can happen in our lives. But the point that Jesus is making is that this is a decision to some extent based on this man's life. Now, most of the other cases where Jesus brings healing or he brings uh, strength or he brings a recovery to a person, uh, it is the result of a physical problem. Either the person has an illness that is physical in nature, uh, in, uh, some type of an infection or a disease, or that person has a congenital problem that is a result of either a birth defect or uh, hereditary issues or some other type of thing, even in, a, in some cases maiming, where a person has uh, been maimed in life. But in these two cases, Jesus indicates that it is a spiritual problem that is at the root of them. In fact, he tells this man later on in John chapter 5 that if he continues to his pattern of sinning, something worse will happen to him physically. Uh, in the other case of the paralytic at Capernaum, uh, he basically forgives this man's sin and 
raises him from his paralysis. There's one other incident that I'll be talking about during my message today that has a spiritual cause to a physical illness. Most of the other spiritual causes to illness are the result of some type of demonic activity in a person's life, and Jesus exercises those spirits from people. But in this case, these are physical maladies that are somehow being caused by a spiritual problem in the person's life, and, and Jesus deals with those in a very different way. Very often, people choose to wallow in some type of problem or illness or disease as a result of a spiritual problem. It is not because of a physical malady. And that is a real sadness in our lives. When we refuse to allow the grace of God to work in our lives and change us, that we hold on to our guilt or we hold on to our victimization or we hold on to some other aspect of our lives that is the result of a spiritual situation. And we basically say, God, I can't trust your grace to deal with this, so I will deal with it on my own. And that is terrible. This man had lived for 38 years with this condition. He had lived with it when he didn't need to, from what Jesus indicates. And Jesus sovereignly steps into the situation and relieves this man and restores him to soundness, even when he doesn't appear to want to be made whole, from what Jesus indicates. What happens in our lives when we don't want to be made whole? When we want to continue with that spiritual problem we're dealing with and we don't really want to give it to God because either we're feeling too guilty or we become too used to it or it's become part of who we are, part of our identity. And that is sad. God wants to change that in all of our lives. He wants his grace to come in, to cleanse out that guilt, to allow us to be free of that sense of victimization, to allow us to stand whole and sound in life. Now, that may not be easy. It may require you to make some changes. It may make it may mean that you may have to um, decide that you're not going to go in certain directions or allow yourself to become involved in certain attitudes. It may mean that you may have to say, I, I'm not going to continue in the pattern of life that I'm doing. When God's grace comes into our lives, Jesus Christ begins the process of changing us on the inside. If you look at John chapter 5 in the first verses of that chapter, you will read this story of this man, and Jesus offers him in verse 14 of this chapter an opportunity to change direction in his life. When we talk about repentance in our lives, it means to change direction. It means to change our thought process. It means to, to reorient ourselves toward what God wants in our lives. And this man is called to do that. It's interesting that John contrasts this with the story in John chapter 9 where the man who is born blind, is, is that is a result of a physical malady. And Jesus makes it very clear it's not the result of guilt or spiritual problems in this man's life or even in his parents' life or even in the community, it's a result of simply happenstance in the world. It is a true physical malady, and yet Jesus Christ is Lord of that as well. He is Lord over all of the struggles of our lives. We just need to give them to him and allow him to begin his work of grace 
in our lives. That grace that transforms even physical problems into his glory and transforms even our guilt, our victimization in life, or any of the other things that we experience into something whole and complete and transformed. I invite you to allow Jesus Christ's grace to make a difference in your life. What do you really want? Do you want to be whole? Do you want to be sound? Do you want to allow God's grace to make you sound? God bless you. You have a good week. Hope to see you in church.